I think you probably know everybody, but we got Jerome Dupree here, morphine drummer. Russ Gershon, uh, first guy to sign morphine and accurate distortion. Phil Davidson, morphine sound man here, right? And of course, the man who needs no introduction, Dana Colley, saxophone. I've, I've always strived to try to find a, uh, a way to put the saxophone in a, in a setting that uh, was, was contemporary to, to what I was listening to, I guess you might say. And uh, so I, I'm sort of a frustrated guitar player more than that's. <laughs> let, me, let me add that he's way too modest, but I think he's one of the like two or three most innovative rock saxophone players ever since, since that genre was defined. <laughs> For my friends, beers. <laughs> I'm serious. Um, because... <laughs> can never tell with you. <laughs> uh, I mean, we all, we, we all know the sort of saxophone sound that comes out of R&B before that. The, um, the Junior Walker, King Curtis sound. And that is def the defining sound of rock sax. Um, and... Uh, the big man with Bruce Springsteen sort of extended it, but Dana really approached it, approaches it completely differently. And Mark, with his band concept, really gave him the room to do that. So uh, we're all lucky to uh, to have experienced that. One of the things I'm most proud of is how timeless the music is, and that's nothing you can try to do on purpose. But you play morphine for someone now if they've never heard it, they're either going to like it or they won't. But it, there's nothing particularly dated about it. And I think that's the beauty. I don't know if the youth of today are, I, don't ask me, but I'm not, I'm too old to be asked about the youth. Uh, any chance I get to um, turn a young person onto morphine? The, <laughs> the band. The band, oh sorry. They take to it, uh, and they get addicted. Um, <laughs> now they're, they're just amazed at this music, and they're like, when, when was this recorded? And what's in the band? There's sax, drums, what? And, uh, but always, always received well. And um, I, think, I think this is exactly what uh, youth of today uh, needs so this is a young person up there what do you think <laughs> okay there you have it so yeah can i can i actually speak to that what real quick if you look back at uh other records during that time you know they have a lot of like synthesizers and a lot of different stuff that uh but morphine's music i think stands pure and uh also i will say that there is younger kids are coming up to me you know we've been on this is our I think seventh film festival, but they come up to you and they say, I didn't know a thing about them, but I saw the film and I'm totally turned on. I'm telling all my friends. So there is a little groundswell building there. Nothing in, in terms of touring. We don't have a booking agent. We don't have a manager. We do it all ourselves. A totally grassroots thing. We take it sort of one offer at a time. Uh, it has to be a healthy offer in order for three guys to get off their couches and, uh, and travel, you know, and come home with some bread in their pockets. So uh, we're a little bit more particular about what we're doing. It's not as, uh, we're not as driven to get into a van and, and drive across the country and come home with, with nothing. So we have to be a little bit more uh, strategic. We, we tried twice uh, going out in a van uh, to the Midwest and it was miserable. Um, <laughs> We, we can do really well in New Orleans because Jeremy used to live there and the people down there come out and really support the band. So I always say that we can play Cambridge, we can play New Orleans, or we have to cross an ocean. Uh, we've had much better luck going to South America and <laughs> Europe. Um, we've been to Sao Paulo, Brazil twice, and uh, Argentina and Chile, 
and it's nuts. I mean, people just come out, young kids come out. Um, it's insane. We get to go, you know, at least for me, who never went through it in the first place, I get to be a rock star for, you know, four days and then come home and nobody cares. Okay. And that's good. Let's tell, you want to hear a story about Jerome the rock star? Okay. <laughs> We were, we were in Brazil, and uh, a young, young lady came up to Jerome and asked uh, Jerome for his uh, autograph, and she presented her forearm for him to sign uh, with a Sharpie. Uh, that happens all the time, right? Okay. We came back, I don't know, six months later, and the same fan, the same lady, uh, came up to, the, to Jerome and said, look, I had it tattooed. Wow. And I didn't know that story. That's great. Had Jerome's signature tattooed on her on her forearm. So yeah, yeah give him a, that's great. Come on. So there's hope. There's hope. I can say I had Martha Quinn sign my arm one time in Texas when I was a kid. Thank God I didn't get a tattoo. <laughs> And one other quick thing I want to say that they, they did the van thing that didn't work so now their bus is the Greyhound of the Skies Southwest yeah, Airlines yeah, you know, they fly and, and Jerome I just want to make sure you check against identity theft in South America too before you <laughs> believe me it wasn't a signature it was uh, I was trying to print because her arm was shaking so bad and the sharpie somebody had given me was gigantic so script was out of the question so I was trying to print and it came out looking like the bottom of a check you know, it was like this little hieroglyphic, but I told her, at least you saw me do it, so you know what it is, but I don't think you could read it. You shouldn't have put the, the routing number on, though. That's, that's right. 